Hey everybody, welcome to the MMA Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant. And I'm Pete Cummins. And as you can see, we are dressed up uh, kind of fancy today. <laughs> Pete did his best. It's our one year anniversary uh, of doing the podcast. It's been fun. It has been fun, been right fun. on to you. So fun. we, uh, when we initially started, we were doing it over at Podcast One, and it was audio only, and we kind of knew all along we wanted to be able to have that video yeah, element I mean, too. So. I mean, look at this, this face. Is... I have a face for a very tiny screen. <laughs> Mobile <laughs> device. I'm good, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we thought we'd class it up a little, although I, I do have to go to work after this, so I couldn't really bring champagne. The, 40, the situation with the 40 on our 40th show is a little touch and go, so uh, we'll have to celebrate right. um, with some champagne another time. If that's cool. okay. Cool. So we today are going to talk about uh, UFC Manila, what just uh, happened. Frankie Edgar victorious over Uriah. We'll talk about Mark Munoz, Gay Garden. Uh, then we'll look forward to UFC 187. We'll hear from Daniel Cormier, and we'll also hear from Travis Brown. I had lunch with both those guys yesterday. Uh, so we'll talk about their upcoming fights. And, uh, and then what's in uh, High Five? Well, I think in lieu of our anniversary show and Dave Letterman's last mm -hmm. episode tomorrow night, I think we'll do a top 10 uh, things that I have learned in my first year of co of covering the UFC. <laughs> oh, really? So, uh, Oh, boy, this should be good. But apparently, I didn't learn much. <laughs> it was a real stretch. I got to about five and was like, Well, the thing is, okay, oh, no. Um, well, because I was going to say, when you start when you start with, I mean, to be honest with you, you were, you were a guy that was like, hey, fighting looks kind of cool, and you, you actually have gotten quite the introduction to the sport right. over the last year. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I wrestled in high school and I boxed a little bit, but I knew nothing about the UFC mm -hmm. and uh, nothing about the fighters. Mm -hmm. And so I think through osmosis, I'm uh, on a knowledge scale, I'm now about a three. Oh. About a three. <laughs> awesome. I've, uh, I've worked up a bit. Well, okay. great. Well, so uh, thanks for joining us here on our uh, on our one year anniversary show. So let's get started here with round one. And of course, we're talking about uh, Frankie Edgar. And Uriah Faber. Now, this was a fight that, you know, people have been clamoring for this fight for years. And Frankie Edgar, a former UFC lightweight champion. You know, Uriah Faber, a former WEC featherweight champion. And, you know, they were finally going to uh, get together and fight. And Uriah has been fighting at bantamweight since 2010. So he's coming up 10 pounds. Would he be stronger? I don't know. Or would been Frankie's boxing out to every... Listen, Frankie swept the cards. Yeah. Frankie did everything. And, you know, I do think uh, Uriah was... Fast. I think Uriah had a ha, actually had like a speed edge. He just didn't do anything uh, enough offensively. See, I, I think Frankie had the speed. You edge. think? I mean, they're both his super counter fast. punching. His counter punching was yeah. was great. I mean, with you know, um, you know with your, your, your Uriah's overhand, mm -hmm. you know, o o overhand rights yeah. and. Uh, um, and then his l l left hooks, and yeah. Frankie was always there, always countering. It was, it, it, uh, it was masterful. It really it was. was. It well, was. and the thing is, you know, Uriah is super fast when you stick and move, stick and move, stick and move. Um, Frankie Edgar had 91 uh, total strikes to Uriah's 50, so uh, Frankie landed 34%. Um, Uriah landed 50% of his total strikes, but he, you know, only threw 149. Uh, 83 significant strikes landed for Frankie versus 48 for Uriah, and Frankie with the takedowns. That's the thing. It's all. About those takedowns. Here's the interesting number though five takedowns, yet still only three minutes and 42 right. seconds because he did not want to be on the ground with U Uriah. I mean, in round two, Uriah took his back yeah. at one point, and the panic look <laughs> on his face was like my kids right. around bees. He was like, ah, ah, get it off, get it off. <laughs> well, Uriah's got that guillotine he can sink in, he's got a rear naked choke. I mean, he's good, he's got a lot of subs, he definitely has a submission edge. But you know, Frankie's an incredible wrestler, but you know, obviously, yeah, Uriah is so dangerous. You know, the thing is, is I, I, um, I it's not that I expected more from Uriah, but I kind of did a little bit. Right. And I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not trying to say, he, you know, he, I, I just thought he would be a little more effective. I thought it would be a little bit more, uh, um, like of a fair, uh, of an even match. I didn't expect Frankie to take all five rounds. I gotta say, I just think like Frankie's footwork mm -hmm. was stupendous. Yeah. I mean, and, and so, Uriah couldn't land that overhand mm -hmm. right, and every time he threw the hook, he got turned, and then it was a takedown, or he got a shot yeah. to the k k kidney. Uh, it, you know, and I also don't agree with the people who accuse Frankie Edgar of like playing for the points. No, Frankie tries to win yeah. every fight. He tries to with finish twelve people. seconds left. He did a wheel kick. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. with twelve seconds left. Yeah. Um, so, you know. 
it was listen he did what he had to yeah. do he it was a it, uh, it was a masterful performance yeah no I think Frankie always does go uh, go for the finish I don't think he's trying to sit there and win points because he's gotten screwed so many times on uh, on decisions do you know what I mean that were really really close like that dude is the last thing he wants is to like yeah let me score a couple points and see what the judges have to say about it like that is totally not how he's trying to operate out there um, but like I said both of us did pick Frankie to win this fight if you go back and look at the show last week I like I said I just didn't expect him to get all five rounds right. uh, but good for him you know he should be in line for the winner of, of uh, Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor of course that's going down at UFC 189 in July here's the thing though Chad Money Mendez is also sitting here like hello I'm awesome too uh, and both Chad and Frankie have fought Jose Aldo uh, unsuccessfully obviously because Jose is still the champion so you know it's interesting if, if Conor is victorious uh, it opens up a few more opportunities. Right, right. But, you know, everybody wants another shot at Jose, too, because now they're like, God dang, i got to get it. And Chad already had two, and his second time was so good and so close. Um, but uh, yeah, both of those guys, have, I mean, Frankie said the other day, yeah, well, I won't sit around and wait. But at the same time, it's like, well, who else is there to fight? Right. Well, only Chad right. Mendes. And so at this point, you know, you don't want to take both those guys out. I don't know. Now It would be an interesting fight, but I don't want to see either of them lose. How old is Jose? Oh, Jose's, uh, what is he now, like 31 or two? Something like that. Right. Something because like that. another thing that this fight like oh, okay. really showed me is like 35's about the hill yeah. for fighters. Like once you get on the other side of 35, you know, things get tough. It gets a little, harder. Get yeah, gets a little yeah. harder. Well, that's what we saw um, with Gegard Mousasi. He's only 29, Costas Filippu uh, in his 30s. And, and the thing about Gegard is he's had 43 fights but he's only 29, he, and I it's could, insane. I could not believe he was totally. only 29. Oh, no, That's, totally. And he's he's awesome. He's a great guy. And that was, to me, yeah, speaking to your point, it was like young guy, older guy. Yeah. And even though in battle years, Gegard is way ahead of Costas, uh, you could still, like, see the youth edge there uh, in that fight. I feel like that helped him a lot. So No, I mean, listen, if you've been fighting since you were 19 mm -hmm. um, and you're now 35, that's 16 Four. years of, like, being a competitive warrior. Yeah. That takes its toll That's on you. That's a long time. Jose is 28. Jose is 28. I over, I over, uh, I overestimated. Wow. I he's only 28. He's 29 28. in September. 29 wow. in September. Thank you, Mr. Fact Man. Now, I will say that Costas Philippou. Yeah. Uh, my kids loved his name. Did they? It took them all of two oh, seconds poop. to go, fill a poop. <laughs> Filled with poop. <laughs> so... <laughs> that guy must have gotten mercilessly teased as a third grader, uh, and I think we know why he had to become a fighter. Uh, yeah, he's actually quite a quite a strong boxer, but Gegard was too good for him and took him down. And you know that's the thing, you got to you're smart when you know you're facing a guy that can just smash you with right. very very powerful boxing. Uh, Gegard fought smart, but you know, and uh, Costas is a tough guy, hard to finish here. So uh, round two. Um, the other main storyline there, of course, uh, was Mark Munoz. And this was his final fight, taking on Luke Barnott, and he got to go home to his ancestral motherland of the Philippines. And, I mean, my goodness. We were sitting there, at the, you know, I was doing these shows at, at Fox, and we were up 1 a.m. call. We're all up and, you know, just antsy and tweaky and all this stuff. But when Mark, all of us just, 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 just please let him win this fight. Like, nothing against Luke Barnott or whatever, but it was like, it, it would break my heart if Mark didn't win this fight. And luckily he did. And that's why I kind of felt bad for Luke because like everyone was rooting against totally. him. Totally. And like, listen, he's a tall, yeah. gangly Englishman, so mm -hmm. he's used to people not liking him from the get-go, but like that had to be even tough for him. Even tough yeah. for, you know, for a pasty Englishman. Yeah. You know, I, listen, I can take, <laughs> Yeah, and it, I can take your anger, but I can't take your <laughs> It's hard, and here's a picture. You know, Mark made it onto the cover of the uh, Philippines uh, newspaper. That I mean, is that's a, a great Isn't that picture. a beautiful picture? Everyone should retire with a picture yeah. like that. Yeah, there's an amazing picture of Shogun doing that, too. I think it's Rampage, uh, way back when in Pride. He's just, like, fully flying through the air with a, wow. with a loaded punch. Um, but so for Mark, you know, it was interesting because we did... I'm not gonna lie, we started to worry because you know he was doing quite well and and you know, even though he looked a little slower than he's looked and whatever, but you know, he's putting combinations together and he was he was being effective and got some takedowns and there the one thing that worried me a little is you know, sometimes when you go to shoot and you have a guy with big long legs and you right. could eat a few knees, which he did. That second um, round was close. Well, that's, well, so that was our thing. Come come round three. 
You know, he's clearly in the lead, but we're like, is this going to be a case of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory? Right, like, right, is this right. thing going to slip away here? Come in. No, so then I'm like, just get on your bike, man. Just, 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 I don't care if it's not pretty, man, but you got to win this fight. You got to win this fight. Thank God he did. I, um, I that second round, I thought it could have gone either way. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, but, but still, uh, he won the third. No, but he completely dominated the third <laughs> yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. so he, you know, so he took it out of the fight, you know, at, at you know, out of the uh, judges. You right, know, judges right. Hands. Now, what did you think? I, I have to say, I do really love the ritual of taking off the gloves and leaving them in the octagon after. It's like, I, I love that. What, what, what? Oh, come on, Pete. <laughs> You, no, you, you can't be cynical I about that. I'm not oh, cynical at Christ all. Sake. I'm not cynical at all. I, uh, but, uh, but I do have one question. Like, who took the gloves away? Like, was that kind of like an awkward moment? You know, when they're like, okay. Okay, now we have another fight. Um, do we not just take these away and put those? Like, who took the gloves? Who's got the gloves? I now? don't know, Pete, but I no, mean, I'm just, that's a practical question. I mean, it's like... The same guy that scrubs the blood off the canvas? I don't know. Is I mean, so like... Janitor, I mean, there's a cage? I mean, they still have two more fights. Janitorial and services? Like, so do we... You didn't want Costas and Gegard tripping over him? They should have just left them Do you want me to just... Here, do right? I, so should I, I... Should just, I... Do these... Oh, um, <sighs> is there a garbage can? I, no, I... It's a beautiful on. moment. It was a beautiful and moment. It was, and it's it was a, and he's a lovely guy and he's done a lot of great things and even though, you know, his record may not show, uh, you know, all the successes that he's actually had as a person and as a fighter and he's really has uh, influenced a lot of other professional fighters and, and it's a sad thing that Ray closed because so many people would come through those doors and get great sparring and great right, practice right. there and uh, just you know wish wish obviously wish Mark uh, the best of luck and you know for Luke Barnard I don't know that's three losses in a row and I don't know if it's one of those things where they were like all right look clearly you know, the odds were against you on this one. Like, yeah, you kind of, yeah, you were, yeah, I, yeah. and I'm not, you know, maybe they'll give him one more chance. I don't know. I mean, it's not like he showed me a lot that he needed to still be in the UFC, but at the same time, that was a big, 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 like, loaded against you situation to be in. I don't know if they'd give him one more chance. That was a tough fight to walk into. It, it, it was. was. And even though even beforehand he was saying, like, oh, it's, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, it's the end of him. Let's talk about, like, the rebirth of me. And, you know, and he was trying to, like, put that kind right, of spin right. on it. Like, it's, you know, I'm going to steal this moment. But I, I'm sorry. Even in his heart of hearts, he's got to be like, well, crap, this is this dude's moment. Like, yeah, that'd be really yeah. hard to no. be crapping I mean, on that parade. Dude, he had <laughs> he had a nation behind him and yeah. Luke Barnett is a Tall, gangly Englishman. So he has like his mother behind him and his aunt. So it's uh, first of all, too, Luke. You got to change your nickname. The uh, the big slow. The big slow. But that's because he didn't get the jokes. Like when he would go to the gym, these people they would joke with him and stuff, and he did. Yeah. He didn't get uh, yeah. the jokes. Yeah, they I understand. He's big and slow. And slow. Yeah. Uh, know, again, slow. not it a doesn't compliment. Doesn't really put fear in the eyes of the, the, eyes of the hearts of. I think that when people called him slow, they were he saying that understand. it's an insult. And as you get to choose your own nickname, you might want to veer away from the childhood insults. And, you know, Towards it's why Philip Poop doesn't call himself filled with poop. You know, he, he veered away. He veered away. From the obvious. Yes. Derisive. I mean, just, listen, what's my nickname? Hi, old guy, right? <laughs> yes. Now, but I you own it. Now, I understand that it's going to be difficult for me to get a job anywhere totally. else as I go in with Pete, hi, old guy, coming. But uh, I believe that <laughs> Luke, the big What are you going to change it to? Keep it? Pete, keep it coming? Pete, Pete. What? I mean, there's so... It's I'm going to keep you it You know too. you have, like, the greatest name for... for <laughs> Pete occasionally partakes old guy coming? I don't know. You know, I have to downplay it a little bit. Pete, watch out, I'm... But who's going to hire a guy like who's... The uh, the big slow. Like, so you want a job in the IT department? We understand that you're slow and you're big, which is the problem because all our servers are crammed in <laughs> there. Um. To round three. Let's look ahead. UFC 187. Going on this weekend out in uh, in the big Vegas. Uh, we, of course, will be out there uh, for uh, MMA Heat. Wade will be out there on Wednesday, so he'll be getting the open workout footage and all that nice. stuff. Uh, I have to do UFC tonight, so I'll be uh, jetting out uh, later. But we've already got a couple of things up, so if you want to just... 
plan ahead for the playlist of all the stuff. Usually on a fight week, we put up like 30 videos. It's insane. Uh, just tinyurl.com forward slash UFC 187 vids, and you'll find all the stuff there. So first and foremost, yesterday we had lunch with Daniel Cormier and uh, and Travis Brown. Now, Travis Brown at a heavyweight could eat whatever he wanted. He's having the, the onion rings and chips, and he actually, but he actually ate pretty healthy because he's, you know, he's trying to be uh, more of a fit heavyweight. But DC had the salmon, some asparagus. He's looking good. He's looking lean. He said he's about 15 pounds out. Uh, so obviously we know that this is Daniel's second chance uh, at the title. He didn't, it didn't go his way with John Jones. And I asked him about this because before he fought John, he said something like, you know, I really feel like the reason I didn't uh, win in the Olympics was because I was meant to be the UFC champion. And I thought to myself, what if that doesn't happen? Like, right, that's, right, now you right, kind of set right. yourself up for some failures. So then I asked him yesterday, okay, so you said this before, and now you're getting a second chance at being this, and what if it doesn't happen? And I don't want to be a bummer. You're the last I person I want in my camp, by the way. But <laughs> Listen, let's uh, let's think of plan no, B. No, <laughs> Pete, it was out of concern for my friend and my co-host that I don't want him to be too emotionally invested in it and make it the life-ending thing right, that it right. could some people may do. So here's what DC had to say about that when I asked him about setting himself up for that kind of, gotcha. uh, of situation. Well, I mean, you know, I, I was talking to my coach yesterday, um, John Smith, mm -hmm. greatest American wrestler of all time. And I said, I got to win this one, coach. He said, you don't have to do anything. You want to. You want to win this fight for yourself and for your family and for all that you've done. Don't put any unwarranted pressure on yourself. And that's that's what I've come to terms with. If it works out, it works out, which I intend it will. But if it doesn't, you know, I, it would suck. But I've done a lot of good things over the course of my athletics career, and I would still continue to press and try to become the champion. Um, you learn at every step, and that's exactly what I'm still doing. See, it's smart. You do learn a lot, and you keep learning, but I – but. I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's hard. I'm glad he's in a better place because I worried for him before. He was so emotionally invested. And the rest of this interview, uh, definitely worth watching. He talks about how much he disliked John Jones and how much emotion he had in there, right. and how that was a problem for him. You you know, you got you can't go in there and be that mad. Well, I mean, you burn so much energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that works in like fight or flight in like a thirty second. Right. Not you know, five rounds. But now you know twenty five <laughs> minutes. Oh of, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I mean, eventually you're gonna tire. Yeah. 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 For sure. And you know, any any any. Um, he also talks about you know before he had said something on the UFC 187 call about. <clears throat> Rumble Johnson, and he said, you know, he's the kind of guy that when he was fighting Vitor and he was getting submitted, you know, he, he, he tapped out, and basically he was implying that, you know, he could have fought it a little harder, and right, he could have this. Right. And so in this interview, we talk about his heart, and he says, no, I'm not saying he doesn't have heart, but I'm telling you that there are two kinds of people, one person that'll look for a way out of a bad situation, and one that'll keep his head in there and keep fighting. And he says that Rumble is the kind of guy that looks for the easy way out. And I saw that part of the interview, and I think it's really funny, because he's like, I'm not saying he doesn't have any heart, and then he gives the exact definition <laughs> of what it means to not have any heart. <laughs> not saying he doesn't have any heart, but when presented with two forks in the road, one where a man with heart would go, and the other where the tin man would go, he takes the tin man's route. But I'm not saying he doesn't have any art. But yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, please do check out the, the interview. Like I said, it's on that playlist, or you could just go to my Karen Bryant channel on YouTube. You know, it's fun, and, and, and you know, it would be um, not for nothing, because I really do like Rumble, and I don't I don't know who's going to win this fight. Right. Like, it's either, you know, I think that the prevailing thought is Rumble by KO or DC by decision. Um, I don't think DC could knock out Rumble. Right, uh, right. Personally, I don't think so. Um, but, um, you know, it would be pretty cool if DC's like, listen, if he could, like, stroll onto the UFC Tonight set yeah, with that yeah, belt, yeah. that's baller right there, man. That's pretty cool. You got to get a full photo of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, around your waist. Yeah, so it's tough. Uh, should be a great fight. Um, I don't know, though. And I think, you know, Rumble, Rumble can wrestle more than maybe he gets credit for. Uh, but he's a violent, violent right. man, and uh, that punching power is no joke. How long was DC's camp? Six weeks? Yeah, now? because he was going to have, that was one thing we talked about, he had a, too long of a camp for John Jones. It was 16 like 16 weeks. weeks. Way like, too long, got burnt out. He was going to have eight weeks for Bader, and then it got abbreviated by two. Right, so, right. so it's a six-week camp. Uh, but he's been, you know, luckily he's got Kane. Uh, and, you know, if you could train with Kane and go in there and spar with Kane every day, like, you're right. pretty much ready for anybody. Uh, I, I do think that is a, a, a true statement. And he's going to turn right around afterwards and 
go down to Mexico, uh, you know, with Kane and help him out for his fight with Verdum, which is uh, on June June 13th. Um, but uh, I don't know. Tough fight on Saturday. I don't know. I don't know. Who are you choosing? I, I can't. I can't. Like I said, Rumble by KO or DC by decision. I can't. Just I can't. Right. Right. I can't. I got you. Well, you well, write it down. Who do you think? Who you or say it? What do you, who do you think? No, I don't want to say it. I'll just write it. I'm, uh, I'm going to write think, it down you here. Gonna you think Rumble's going to win? You think Rumble's going to win? No, 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 no. Yeah, just written it down. Next week. <laughs> Next week, we'll, we'll write see something else right. down a different thing. All right, uh, this is round. This is how I have 100% of my predictions. Yes, <laughs> round the hindsight predictions, starring Pete Cummins. <laughs> um, uh, uh, King of the Monday morning quarterbacking. Um, so, also on this card, Travis Brown. Travis has been on the podcast with us before. Travis is just a cool I dude. like Travis. Really like Travis a lot. And, you know, he used to uh, train out of Jackson's MMA down in Albuquerque. So at UFC 187, he's fighting Andre Arlovsky, his former training partner, like friend of his. He said literally, like, this is a guy that I used to, you know, at his fights, I'm in his corner and I'm screaming for him to win right. and, you know, da 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 da. So uh, I talked to him about, you know, how you kind of get psyched up to fight your friend and, you know, how you have to be careful about thinking you know how they fight too much because obviously things can change. Uh, but so Travis has been training at Glendale Fighting Club with Edmund Tarverdian. Of course, everybody knows he's Ronda Rousey's coach um, and has coached, uh, you know, Manny Gamborian trains out of there. A lot of guys train out of there. Um, but Edmund is not a person who will train everybody. Like you can't, you don't, you don't, he's got a very small circle. You know, um, so I asked him how he so got in with them. He won't help me on the stairmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Edmund is, you know, um, if anybody knows anything about Armenians, they're incredibly passionate people, um, and they take loyalty very seriously. Right. So, uh, so I asked Travis, though, so like, you know, he, he's kind of like an odd guy that you wouldn't expect to be in there. So I asked him how it was that he and uh, Edmund came to working together and, and how they bonded. So here's what he had to say about that. Well, you know, I think. Uh, you know, in the in this world, in this in this time that we're living in now, um, <clears throat> somebody's word and a handshake isn't good enough. You know, and 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 in the world that Coach Edmund and I live in, a handshake and your word is still good enough. And that's something that is tested when you go through your daily um, walks with people. You know, you if you say you're going to do something and you stand behind it, then then you're a certain kind of person. And if not, um, then, you know, if you need a piece of paper, signed piece of paper as a contract, you know, then I don't want to deal with you kind of a thing. And Coach Edmund and I, you know, we have that understanding and that that was shown in the in the very beginning of our of our training, you know, regiment and our training, you know, in, in our relationship. Said, hey, I'll be up there on this day. He said, okay, I was there, you know, and, and everything followed through, so. Yeah, I got it. It's it is kind of true nowadays. It's hard to get people to stand by their word. <laughs> yes, it is. So you're yes. laughing. I said something anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Pete. He also talks about Brendan Schaub, that was former opponent. Who everything was fine, and then like right before they went out, Brendan threw him some shade at the weigh-ins, and then he got he got really pissed and uh, decided that he he was gonna he told he told he wanted to big brother him, and that's he just it, was like punishing him. Now, now what was I didn't get what Brendan did that was so offensive. I guess he like threw him some shady look right before. Oh nice, right before they walked out at the weigh-ins and like he because he was like all week long you never looked at me you never engaged at all and like right before they called his name I guess he like threw him some shade or something. I, I was totally that was like rude. Yeah, but aren't they doing a um, aren't they about to do a stare? I don't know, but I like, guess it was like all of a sudden it was like I think his point was if you're gonna be a d a d a, d a d bag like right. be that be that way the whole time or not like all of a sudden like now right. now right. you're gonna now you're gonna do it like I think he was just kind of offended that he just decided to start it right then and there like maybe it was I don't know so here's here's a shot of me and Jarvis um you'll have to watch the interview to see what we're talking about there but it's a uh, uh, yeah it's uh, he's a good <laughs> he is how about that beard the fun jelly aren't you well the beard looks fake it, it's funny because his hair is so short it looks like he's wearing one of those like <laughs> you know, um I mean I like Attachable. clip around yeah. the ear yeah. beards uh, well it's not it's real and it's spectacular. <laughs> 
No, Travis is a good dude. He's a real good dude. I like how he said that he l loaded it up with Old Spice. Oh, yeah, he's going to get the Old Spice. He should, that and he should just use, like, Axe body spray <laughs> all over. I'll the throw him girl. off. But the ring girls will be so attractive yes, to him, right, yes, if you yes. believe the ads. No, Travis is a good dude, so he's fighting Arlovsky. Listen, Travis is number three right now. Uh, in that interview, I also asked him about, uh, you know, the heavyweight uh, title picture because you know, he's been on quite a roll. The only person he's lost to is Verdum uh, out of his last, like, six fights or something. So I was asking him how he feels about that title fight and if it's better for him if Verdum wins or Kane. So we talk about that a little bit. Um, but, you know, Travis is funny. You know, he's chill. He's not going to necessarily call people out. But, he's look, he's number three. The dude needs a title shot soon. He's gonna, well, it's going to happen. It's funny. And compare what he said to what D DC said. I mean, you asked him what it's going to be like to fight your friend. And he's mm -hmm. like, i got to go in and do my job. Yeah. And so very business-like mm -hmm. attitude and that's you know and what DC was saying is what I've now learned is <laughs> yeah. that I need a much more business-like yeah. attitude yeah. but DC um, is a very emotional guy which is why he is likable you know I obviously right, I, right. I work with him a lot um, and that's what in, is endearing about him do you know what I mean he is so emotional I mean the guy has had some really terrible losses in his life in his personal life uh, that many people would not really come out of in, in as positive a way that he has uh, and so he's you know he's he's a, he's a great dude but Travis is cool he's just a young guy he's still learning he's the first one to admit that he didn't even know how to throw a jab like up until like a year right. ago which is insane well and he makes a great point that his learning curve has been f f for the most part in the UFC yeah. and he's like most guys fight like five years before they right, get here right. I, I fought one year before I get <laughs> here like, so like everyone's watched my mistakes right, right. And, but listen it's going to be a great card it is it's, it's going to be a really I mean, good card I was bummed out losing John Jones but still like with a number three heavyweight yeah. it, you know is the third fight oh yeah and, and we uh, also have Cowboy Cerrone in there it, it, against McDessie it's going to be Rose Namajunas on the card, my girl Rose. Uh, all right, round five. What's up? What's up? Round five. All right, all right. So listen. A year ago, you took me into your wing can, and you brought me in. I did. I knew nothing about the UFC, so this is a top ten list of things that I've learned in my first year covering the UFC. Okay. Okay. All right. First, number ten. Thanks to the UFC, when I watch two women fight, I no longer demand that it's done in a vat of Jello. <laughs> That thank was you. The, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm, thank you. That's... I now also find cauliflower ear kind of sexy Do you? on a woman. On a woman, but I have I, I still say no to steroid induced back acne. Yeah. Not not on a woman. Back not acne woman. is not not good. Number nine. I learned that if you're within four weeks of a fight, you need to keep a very close eye on John Jones, Nate Diaz, and your drink around Bill Cosby. Just very close. <laughs> don't uh, don't. Don't want to take your eyes off. We're going to do pudding. Eight. We're going to do pudding. I've learned a bunch of moves. Yeah. Have you? Guillotine, arm bar, rear naked choke, which as it turns out is not what my uncle showed me when I was nine. <laughs> oh, no. Now, apparently that was just molestation. <laughs> the naked rear hole or something. I was, I just, thanks to Wade, because, because, uh, because, hold on. No, Wade was showing me the moves, and then he puts the rear naked choke on, and then I said, but when you tell me that it's just our secret, and then, um, and then oh Wade said, uh, Pete, I think you need to sit down for a second. So, you know, I'm not, <laughs> these are things that I personally have learned. Number seven of things that I've learned in my first year covering the UFC, I learned that my coffee tastes better when Wade pours it. Yes! When Wade pours it. In That's fact, true. I have a little anniversary present for yeah. Wade. For really? Wade. Wait, this is an application for employment for Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> as, I, uh, as, I, uh, as I think that you have an exceptional skill and nice. there's a big future yeah, ahead for you. Oh, for you. Nice, very nice. Well, baristas actually make the coffee. Why don't we oh, start? no. He, yeah, we uh, start assistant slow. barista. Thank you, thank you. So look at it. For everyone, first of all, look at the, uh, you know, the, the, the grip. I mean, look the, at the, the wrist movement. The torque he, is he doesn't, it's perfect. I mean, no it's dripping. Perfect. It's perfect. Wow. That's, wow. Kids, pretty good. Kids, kids, you can learn from that. All right, so where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, we are not, number five. Yes. Okay, mm. I learned that if Chris Weidman comes to your home, you need to properly label everything he is not to shit in. Okay? Because if you remember the story, Chris was at his future in-law's house, and he didn't want to use their bathroom, as he thought that was too forward and disrespectful. So he did what any of us would have done, and he shit in their trash can. 
<laughs> I'm just going to say, when it comes to bowel movements, Chris is not the best decision maker. And uh, he needs help. So uh, I would see if I had a little sticky note, you should put like a sticky note here. Don't yeah. shit here. <laughs> you know, I mean, a one on the screen. No shitting here. Uh, so just things that I've learned. Things that... Okay. Number five. I finally learned how to pronounce... <laughs> no, you didn't. Shoot. <laughs> Johanna Jed Jedrichik. Jan Jacic. Jakinic. Jan Jacic. Jan Jerkyrich. <laughs> Jan Jacic. Jan Jedenbic. <laughs> Fudruckers. Milosevic. Wait, hold on. Give it to me one more time. Johanna Jan Jacic. Jan Jacic. Yon Jacic. Yon Jacic. Yeah. Yes. Jennifer Yon Jacic. Joanna. Joanna <laughs> Jerkinbitch. <laughs> Joanna John Jacic. Close. Close. Pretty good. Close enough. Close oh enough. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay. Number four. We're yeah. Gonna, uh, we're going to do this in a little, uh, what's that show where they give you the answer and then you say the question? What is Jeopardy? Yes. yes. Good, 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 good. All right. Uh, I learned that while pigeons mate for life, these two animals do not. What is a porn star and a fighter? Oh, fighter, no. yes. Oh, no. Tito Ortiz, Jenna Jameson, yes, yes. So, well. so uh, I have a lot of bridal registry gifts that need to be returned. <laughs> so don't bet on porn stars and fighters. Okay, another one. Yeah. I learned that no matter how big mine is, hers is bigger. What is uh, the, the the champ's purse like the like? What is Karen's water jug? <laughs> water jug. I would have also accepted what is Cyborg's testosterone levels, but we're going with the water jug. We're going with the water jug. In Kay. fact, in fact, uh -oh. I have a little bit. I, uh oh. I have an anniversary present for you oh, too. Oh, nice! I got you. Uh, well, I thought it was as large a beer mug. No, too. Okay, well, that's very nice. Thank you, because this is a 52-ouncer. See, now, it, no, but see, you don't tell people that. You tell them that this is a 12-ounce, that's a 16, and now your hands look small. Oh, they look so dainty. Because I don't know if you guys know, but Karen has, like, mitts, man. They're, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> What number are we on, Pete? <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, number two. Number, number two. two. All right, let's see. Two, two. You know, he's a great, great, uh, great coffee pour, but a little slow. <laughs> okay. If it magically appears and pays for itself. Uh, I don't know. What is What Karen and Wade mean when they say, sure, let's get a backdrop for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zing. What are we? What are we? Six months in? Six Zing. months in? Hello? Hello? Zing. Hello? Hello? Okay, wrap it up, Pete. What else? God, I didn't know it would be so abusive. <laughs> and finally, the number one thing I've learned this past year, if you want to put someone to sleep, you can put them in a guillotine, a rear naked choke, or just replay the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight. Oh, Ow! nice. Nicely done, Pete. Thank Come you. In. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you for this. And honestly, you know, I have a gift for you. Um, you know, I usually... Uh, uh, you know, wrap things pretty and, and make a big show of it. Uh, but I, I didn't really have the time. But it's your, it, this is like a combination uh, anniversary present. And also, folks, this man has a birthday later this week, which, you know, thanks to Facebook, because you would never, you would have, <laughs> and if, if that's the case, then I'm 23. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Cool. All right, and cool. that's a cool. 16 ounce the story water we're sticking to it. So uh, this is for your an uh, yeah, an our anniversary you. present thank and you. a birthday. Thank but you. I, I really, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, do a better job with the, with the wrapping. Wow, geez, this is. But this is something special. When I saw it, I, I like thought, the bow you put on. When it. I saw it, I thought this was something that the high old guy would appreciate, and uh, and that um, he would just have a good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it isn't this isn't this appropriate for a father? <laughs> Here we go, folks. Here we go. I remember I went to, I went to spring break when I was like 21, <laughs> and, and, um, and I actually wore down on spring break a shirt that said "No Fat Chicks." <laughs> oh my god! And it was like, hey, hey. 
Hey, why the broad staying away from me? Oh, that worry that. Yes, well, I'm sorry, you know. But um, that was like 30 years ago. I'm not sure that I could have. Uh, well, you know, I like it. You, Thank you've you. been wearing Thank it around you. the house. And, Blow and, me for luck. <laughs> and I apologize in advance gonna, to your lovely bride. Yes, as I stand there just wearing a t shirt. <laughs> as nobody looks good in It's a gambling before. reference. I understand. Yes, yes. That's speaking of, exactly speaking of gambling, up, yeah, yeah. oh no, look at, yes, you've been reborn. Ah, Wade yes, went on yes. the bike the other day, what is that? Look at that. Next thing I know, he's stripping his shirt off and uh, running to the fall. There is that. High old guy was, I, like, I was momentarily the coolest guy at these yeah. waterfalls for about 47 seconds, because then as soon as I left, somebody up top goes, Look out below! And then this like rope comes down and these five guys like rappel down. So crazy. So I had my thunder stolen like 40 seconds. But I love it. that the woman on the lower right, see how she's actually filming you. There you go. Yeah. You're gonna go yeah. viral. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Nice, sure. nice. Actually, the, this actually just Karen dumping her, her water on me, actually. That was that. And we can recreate it right <laughs> now if you'd like, Pete. Uh, listen, folks, um, don't forget. Uh, when you need tips, uh, techniques, we actually have some good stuff uh, for um, uh, back control here. Willard and um, uh, 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 um, Kango um, do a, a, I know it looks questionable, Pete. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Uncle Gary, what you did was wrong. No, <laughs> no they're, they're demoing, uh, once you have back control, how you can get somebody down. And you, the, the right. tricks here, the little pointer here is, nice. is the hook. So we'll show you that. That's uh, on www.mma.help. So we've got techniques for you there. And once again, you know, MMA Heat, we're going to be out at UFC 187. So uh, just subscribe to either my, uh, the YouTube uh, Karen Bryant channel or, you know, just like us on Facebook so you don't miss anything or look for uh, tinyurl.com forward slash <clears throat> UFC 187 vids. So there you go. Nice. Well, Pete, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a fun year. <laughs> You've made me laugh a lot, so I, I, yeah, I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you. it. And uh, and for, for uh, those of you who have uh, been joining us, we appreciate it very much. It's a good time. Um, look for us on iTunes and uh, Stitcher. You can go to mmaheat.com forward slash podcast for those links. Uh, Wade, why don't you come and model yeah. your shirt too? Wait, Wade yeah, got he in the action the only here. One to, uh, dress uh, up today. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got all fancy, so I'm, I'm wearing the... I'm also security, so... Um, uh, there you go, there you go. Compact. I love it, I love it. So, uh, so yeah, we appreciate it, and um, and we will see you. Well, you know, Monday's Memorial Day, so I don't know if we'll do it on Memorial Day, unless we do it, like, at a barbecue or something, but uh, but we'll be back next Monday, week. Tuesday? Like, yeah, cool, whatever. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, watching and listening. On Instagram, I'm KB Heat. On uh, Twitter, I'm at Karen Bryant, K-A-R-Y-N. Uh, where, where, where do they find you? Uh, my Noogie on Twitter, at My Noogie. All right, awesome. We and Tinder, of course. Oh, my God. Always Swipe Tinder. Left. Always Tinder. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you right. left time. Right. next time. Left time. See you next time. <laughs>